Hello, and welcome to another episode of Gaming by the Pint. I'm your host, Phil. I'm Justin. And tonight we're going to talk about the Mortal Kombat series. And the beer of choice tonight is the Shoots Squeezy Rider West Coast IPA from Bend, Oregon. Well, the Shoots is usually a good favorite of mine, so. I've enjoyed the Shoots. This is their new, possibly a hazy IPA. It's definitely West Coast, so we'll find out. One thing I like about Bend, Oregon's brewery is the fact that Deschutes puts active yeast in all their cans, so it keeps the beer fresher for longer. That's awesome. I don't know if everybody does that. I don't know how many breweries, if they do, who does, but... I mean, it says it right on the can, mm -hmm. so... But that does smell good. It definitely smells fruity. Definitely smells fruity. Wow. It's like really sweet. It is. It's juicy. Well, skull. Wow, skull. That's actually pretty that's I like that so far. That's it's pretty gotta, good. Yeah. Usually right. for Deschutes, you and I have had the uh, What's that one? The squeeze, not the. There's a. They have a hazy called. Well, it's usually just fresh squeezed. Fresh right? squeezed, yeah. They have one that's just an IPA. It's fresh squeezed that's really good. Then they have a. One they have hazy, I know. And then I believe they came out with an alternate hazy one. Sure. And everything, but. And this is seven percent. Yeah. Doesn't taste like it. No. Doesn't taste like seven percent. No, not at all. I think I could actually almost drink this on a boat. Yeah. This is def I think maybe they are bringing out their summer beers now. This would be nice to sit outside and maybe have to do a lawnmower and just kind of like, you know. <laughs> I don't know how many you, you, know, you could drink, but. You after wouldn't... sweating, working lawnmower, you have one 7.5% alcohol beer. You're just like, oh, yeah, it's, it's, that's good stuff. Right. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be tanked in no time. Probably. Well, yeah. 7%. That's that's nice. But if you can't handle a 7% beer, you're weak. <laughs> Try luck trying to deal with your higher up. <laughs> Those double IPAs are like 10 or 11% now. Right. Yeah, but they definitely got some good stuff out there lately. Just straight up ass kicking, man. Yeah. It'll put you down. Yeah. Or it grows some air on your chest anyways. I'll do a little bit of both. Yeah. I'm digging it. I yeah, like the it. fruitiness is there. The kind of, the juicy. I mean, definitely hazy, but they didn't actually label it as hazy. They basically just called it a West Coast IPA. So, so I almost want to say it's more like a, like a mango. I do taste mango in it. Yeah, that's what I would. That's what I'd say it tastes like. So the squeezy rider. If you have the shoots in your area, I recommend trying them out. They have some really good beers. Well, I wish they had a brewery around here. I'd definitely stop there. I would definitely go to yeah. I would if they <laughs> even when I if I go out to Bend, Oregon, I would definitely want to say I want to hit up the shoots brewery. Oh, for sure. Definitely try that out. All right. So tonight we're talking about Mortal Kombat. Hell yeah, man! This game came out back in was it ninety. Two ninety three, I believe so. The movie came out in ninety five, and that was that. I was getting its hype out. Like I loved Mortal Kombat. I got. What's I don't know. I mean, I wasn't obsessed, but um, I really liked the first three. The one, two, and three I thought were just fun games. I wanted to go to the arcade and play Mortal Kombat. Sure. I wanted to, especially when three came out. That was like a huge game changer because of the whole character roster, graphics, but they added combos and just it just. Right. Because the first one was like, we all know, playing it now is kind of like, wow, it's rough to play. Well, I spend hours at a time sitting at Aladdin's castle. I say sitting, not literally sitting, playing Mortal Kombat with mm -hmm. all my friends. I mean, it was awesome. Who knows how many hundreds of dollars I probably spent with quarters just playing Mortal Kombat. Yeah. So, um, it's awesome. And then you had the... Um versions between the Genesis and Super Nintendo. Right. Where uh, the Super Nintendo did not have blood in the first one, 
about the Genesis, you had a blood code. I remember right. people prefer the Genesis oh, one. Oh, that's you right. Enter the, blood the blood code. code. The blood code. And then when they released the second one, Nintendo finally said, fine. So both co- both games had blood in it. Right. And then, yeah, and then it just came down to... <laughs> but at the same... But, like, people have done comparisons. People say, which one's superior gaming? I mean, there's really... Uh, you really have to nitpick at it to see which one was better. This is when parents started figuring out, oh, you know, I don't want my kids to be playing that type of a game. Right. So they were trying to veer away from all the blood and everything. Mm-hmm. But it's, I mean, <laughs> it obviously, with the fatalities and everything else, like... Still going strong. Right. So that's what everybody loves to see, apparently. So, For me, after... Uh... Mortal Kombat 4, I think, was the last one that I actually bought before I didn't really lose interest. I mean, I just kind of wasn't paying attention to all these other games. Like, you have Deadly Alliance, you have Armageddon. It seems like they try to go in a different way instead of going 4, 5, 6, 7. Right. But then, like, after those two that came out for the original Xbox, PlayStation 2, and everything, there was, like, a couple years where Mortal Kombat didn't come out until they came out with the like reboot right there back in like 2009 right and but then from there it kind of it just kind of seemed like plain jane you know just you know just attack each other and that's it right like arcade style but it's kind of like what you're talking about once they started in like right around 2009 ish that's i feel like they started telling an actual story so there's a total storyline now that you can follow all the way till now so that's pretty crazy <clears throat> Yeah, because especially you and I just finished Mortal Kombat 11. Yep. And we did play Mortal Kombat 10 before, and both of them had a story that you don't just pick one character and go through it. If you pick a story, you play as different characters that progress the story. So if you start off maybe as Johnny Cage, do like three or four fights with him, then it moves on to someone else like Sonya, and then you go to Jax or right. you know, Sub-Zero and everything. So you actually get a chance to see everybody's story. It wasn't just like, oh, you're going to carry this guy through the whole tournament. Right. So... You can't just be raiding and yeah. just win the entire time. That's not how it works. So you get a little piece of everybody and see what they do. And for the most part, they tried to keep it even, Steven, with a lot of their traits, mm-hmm. which you can see with their AI battles. So that you can combat that just to get more hearts for fatalities. You can do that to gain hearts faster, I should say, towards getting more boosts. But that's a totally different ordeal, so... Um, but between the fatalities and the brutalities, like, it's just, well, or the friendship. Yeah. Uh, and you gotta have that in there, cause gotta yeah. please the parents. <laughs> Look, mom, I didn't destroy him, I friendshiped him. It's like, fine. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. And then they had the babyality, you remember that? From like, oh, yeah. Combat 2 or something, and like, yeah, they carried in 3, or trying to school. baby. Right. But... Think about when, um, like, I know when Mortal Kombat kind of had to come back, because for me, fighting games can get kind of boring, because it's the same old, it's like you're just fighting, there's really no, like, story, there's no, the replay value is there, because you're playing fighting games, but. Well, the replay is only good if, like, you got your brothers around or whatever, and you're just like, Mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to go at it, and then just watch each of you rage against each other as right. one person gets stuck doing the same move against the other guy and you're like oh but now they actually now with like this one you actually play online with other people right so right now you can play online and just be like all right i'm playing some joe schmo somewhere else in the either in the u.s or somewhere else in the world yep and they mop the floor with you and you're like okay but it is what it is the direction that mortal Kombat is going i think is positive because like you said there's actually a story the characters are a lot more, I think, developed than before because it seems like every game came out. Okay, we have your Sub Zero, Scorpion, Liu Kang, Ray, and like the right. staples. Then they introduce four or five new characters, depending on all those, and you may, they may carry on or they may only be in one game. Right. Sometimes they'll eliminate them and then they bring them back into another later game. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of cool. I mean, I love the fact that they build on the different characters and plug and play different elements as far as Marvel or DC characters mm-hmm. I mean let alone the Terminator you know so yeah they branch out and throw more people in the fighting game which right. is fun because what you got Mortal Kombat X they had all the um, 
that Jason, they have Freddy. Oh, yeah. The Predator and Alien from that one. Then you go to Mortal Kombat 11. And like you said, they got Terminator, Robocop, Rambo, and Spawn. Yep. And Spawn's everything. pretty sick. He looks like Deadpool. So. so the ones that you not normally see in a fighting game that are brought in, you're like, oh. but then it works. It's fun. Right. It's fun to have them. Right. I, <laughs> I feel like I enjoyed every one of them, uh, even all the way back to the... Did it originally come out on the SNES? You think? Yep, for uh, the Super Nintendo and Genesis, where uh, it did come out on Game Boy and Game Gear. Mm. And then, of course, it followed up on the PlayStation, Saturn, 64, just carried on. And I think, because the PlayStation 2 Xbox was there, I don't know if GameCube got any, I'm not 100% sure. But It'd be then, crazy if they didn't have it on GameCube. That'd be crazy. It's probably the same games that was ported on probably. Xbox. Probably. Ported it over. But then, uh, yeah, and then PS3 came out. Um, then they came out with the new ones, like the reboot at Mortal Kombat. Sure. And since Midway went bankrupt about like mid two thousands, the Warner Brothers came in and bought the rights to Mortal Kombat, and that's why you get games like, you know, DC versus Mortal Kombat, because now they have the rights, they can do that combination and stuff. So. Right. With corporations just buying each other out, I mean, right. you're going to get a lot of different. Who knows what's going to happen, what mm -hmm. they do with the mix. One thing I do remember is, like, the hype of Mortal Kombat, especially when the movie came out, like, it was up there. You, right. People were like, do you have Mortal Kombat? Or you had friends say, like, oh, I got Mortal Kombat. Like, oh, yeah, let's go to his house and hang out and play it. Well, it's definitely got a fan base mm -hmm. following it, so. Um, I mean, if you grew up playing it, you're probably still going to enjoy playing the newest version. Right. So, some of the same stuff. Um... I'm just a huge button smasher, so yeah, <laughs> people will get mad when they play against me. They're like, you don't even know what you're doing! And I'm like, yeah, but you still died. Just get lucky. Care. <laughs> I smashed the right buttons. The one thing that uh, has always frustrated me is uh, the fatalities, because you have to do the right amount button sequence in the right area right. at the right amount. If you miss it, they timers out or oh I punched him or kicked him and you're like no that's not what I want to do thankfully with 11 they actually should have fatality training right so you can train which where it is so I can tell you if it's close mid or far you can go from there and try it right it actually sets up like a little square of where you're supposed to stand in relationship yeah. to the person and the correct sequence too so yeah green and then it tells you what button sequence is on it Right, not so just go. how to do it. Actually, shows you what you're pressing at that moment in time yep. to know if you screwed it up. So, if you're a big button smasher, <laughs> it can help. Um, but I don't think they actually show the brutalities. Only no. the fatalities. Only fatalities, yeah. I mean, Same with uh, friendships or anything like that. Apparently, that's something I still need to learn because it's... In previous games, the brutality was just... Um, you do another, you do a code input and then they just combo the crap out of them until they explode right and this one seems like you gotta button mash them and then end with a certain sequence of buttons for it to be turned into brutality but the only time you and I have seen brutality is when we've done the AI battles in MK11 right because then the computer would do it for us sure so, which was great yeah <laughs> it just Thanks. didn't count against the daily challenge do three brutalities we're like yeah we did it nope doesn't count because the computer did it it's like stupid it's like god yeah. come on took that away <laughs> oh man but each individual has a different fatality and it's a different combo for each fatality that's different right. as well so they don't all match up you'd have to memorize each specific characters in order mm -hmm. to actually complete them so but between ripping somebody's spine out or shooting somebody in their eyeballs <laughs> or whatever uh ripping somebody's interior interiors your guts out yeah intestines right to ripping off your arms and do whatever like it's crazy so if That's... if you haven't played mortal Kombat, you should definitely want to reach out and play that i would say i mean from when we play like you can totally tell there's a difference between Mortal Kombat for like the 360 PS3 to 10, but then playing from 10 to 11, like they, it almost seems like they completely went back and redid everything because the characters are all new. Right. It's not the same models. The graphics are just a lot better. It's almost like they learned what they did with that one and said, we can actually 
crank it up more, and then that's what they did with Eleven. Right. And really, just up the ante on uh, character models, especially voice acting and everything. I think yep. it was on top of uh, other good games we played, especially with Eleven. Well, they correlated with the movie even. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's pretty badass. So I definitely approved of the better graphics in relationship to the actual people looking like people. Yeah. So it's a lot more realistic. Yeah, they must have done like actually hire models, face scan them, and right. then use that. Right. And then just figured out what would be a good voice actor to fit with them, and everything. So, but. Being a Mortal Kombat fan, yeah, I've been slacking over these past couple years because it's just... Well, you're like, like, ah, Mortal Kombat's Mortal Kombat, right? Right. You're like, ah, you know, it's arcade style, just going up against somebody else. Right. But they're really starting to up the ante with the storyline. They got the, the, what is it, the towers that you can play. Yeah. So that's kind of like some of the original stuff that you could play with towers as well. Mm -hmm. They kept that going. And then they also have the crypt, where you can upgrade all your characters as far as the types of weapons or moves or outfits or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they have everything in there, and you unlock, like you said, fatalities. You can unlock right. moves. I guess apparently you can um, go to the forge and create augmentations that you can input into your character that helps probably give yourself boosts right and everything probably for online battles that and probably yeah if you go back to the tower you could probably keep it there too right but i mean customization with the character like just like for example sub-zero alone he has like over 50 different face masks you can change from you know every solo like his chest piece his you know his leggings and everything right i mean you could customize it to the point where not one character is the same well not just you know customizing that you can actually customize your AI bot mm-hmm. while you're doing online battles. Yep. And it's like, wow, that was never a thing before. Customizing your AI? That's strange. For each individual character, customization. So so if you're one of those people that kind of likes to create collect data, you can see which character does best with against different characters. And actually, before you fight your uh, characters, they tell you, like, where did he kind of buff up his... the buff up in combos? the buff up in blocks? the buff up in right. reactions and stuff like that? And so, depending on the battle goes out, like if you get your ass wiped, okay, the guy had this thing cranked up, maybe I should try that on mine. Right, and it shows what they did, how they right. changed their AI. Yeah. So if they smoked you, you can try to see what they catered to while using that character. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty cool. Definitely. Yeah, that's... The AI thing is actually a fun because it's like it's kind of like it's like betting, but it's not because you're like, <laughs> all right, you pick because you can actually pick a list. You can see the wins losses. You can see who they picked. You can be like, all right, you see their defenders, right. so you know who they're defending against. And you're like, all right, I think I can take this character right. and fight that character and right. beat them. But then you're like, okay, this character who would be good? And we've gone in and tried to fight certain people, like Baraka, for example. Like, we haven't really found someone who's good against Baraka yet. Or would it be, like, do we say, like, I think Garrus, the one of well, the time people. I think Noob can always take him out. But usually you're using Noob towards somebody else on the character lineup. Yeah. So. Usually you start with Noob, kind of set it up to see <laughs> how it's going to win. Because it's best two out of three. So right. you win the one, you win the first one, you lose the second one, then you go to the third one, and, you know, whoever wins, great. Right. But, so. Yeah, it's... AI battle for this one is a lot of fun. I'm not sure if Mortal Kombat 10 has it. We need to go probably back and check if they added it. Maybe they did it, did not. I don't remember what. And if they did, I don't know if it's just that. as fleshed out as 11. I think that's something they actually really added to it. Sure. But. Well, one thing that I thought about, uh, I bought it for the Switch. Mm-hmm. And when I bought it online, well, well when I ordered it anyways, uh, I actually didn't get the card with it. And I'm like, oh, well, I should have apparently checked into the details a little bit and known that it was just going to be an online thing and then they just send you a case with nothing in it. It's like, well, thanks for the plastic case. But... Just gives you a download code and... Right. So, 
you know, if something ever happens to that device, well, you're, I don't know if you're SOL and, or you can re-download it again or, or what, you know? Yeah. So, I'm not sure. You should be able to re-download. It's locked to your account. Right. So, so you as do. long as you log in your account mm -hmm. on whatever the new device is, you can still at least play that game. Right. So, that's an interesting thing. So as long as Nintendo doesn't shut their Switch servers down 20 years from now. Oh, right. Well, that would suck. Yeah. <laughs> Back everything up now, because... Right. You're gone. It's gone. I don't know. It's... That or you find the game down the road for like 10 bucks. You're like, all right, now I got the physical copy. Right. You know, who cares? So if the digital one goes to hell, well, I think that's why you and I prefer to collect discs is because we want the physical copy. Because ever that one day in the future where they shut down those servers, it's like... Oh, yeah. How mad are you going to be when your right. servers are shut down? You're like, oh, it was like epic, like mm -hmm. in the past. If a server shut down on like a Friday or Saturday, people would be so livid. Like, this is what I wanted to do the entire weekend. Oh, yeah. Play games and just. Like, I don't have anything to do tomorrow. I'm just going to get the new game. Like, mmm. Right. So then they just be like, oh, frustrated. Well, at least now, you know. People are going to watch Netflix or whatever else servers are down, but I don't know. It's an interesting uh, conundrum. The thing about one thing that I've noticed with Mortal Kombat <clears throat> over their games over the years is that um, the details of the backgrounds, the levels, the mat, the, where they're at. <clears throat> Each game comes out with a different one, but they've added more detail to the background itself. So, like, you're fighting, and something else is going on in the background. Right. So and that's then you could fun actually... for everybody else that's just watching, not yeah. playing. You're like, hey, you, did you see that? Yeah, it's uh, that's some detail back there. Or now with, like, 10, 11, they actually added where objects you can grab and jack around. You, know, you can smack oh, right. with them or use the right. level with them. So, like, you're at the tank base. You can throw their head against a Jeep and just crush their skull and just boom. <laughs> and everything. And that's pretty sweet that they actually added that into it using the levels. And then there's actually stage fatalities too in eleven, that you can kill them with using the stage and everything. Right. No, I approve. I think uh, they did an awesome job. Uh, they're definitely going in a good direction. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see that out of, you know, some of these guys. It's not like they always do that. No. So I think um, NetherRealm Studios, who's now is in charge of developing all the Mortal Kombat. They listen to their fans. They've been doing tournaments, getting feedback, and, you know, I think the path that Mortal Kombat is on now, I think they will come out with, like, when if 12 comes out, it's probably something I'm going to probably look into. I don't know if I'll buy it right when it comes out, but I'd be curious to see, because you buy it, and then within six to eight months, they start releasing these character packs, or they like this one that came out with Aftermath, which is an addition onto the original story, oh, you right. know? So it's almost kind of like, I'll wait till they're all said and done, like XL. To get the collection. To get the whole Get thing. all the DLCs. Yep. The Aftermath, uh, which is offered on the Switch as well, is uh, definitely worth playing. You don't want to just play the game. Mm -hmm. You want to see what the whole game is about. Because the DLC for Aftermath actually explains the story completely with a different ending. Mm -hmm. So you're like, what? If you, and they're charging what, like forty bucks for a DLC? I think. Yeah, I think uh, it was like twenty dollars for the combat pack, which gave you four characters and a bunch of new skins. And then aftermath was like additional, like forty dollars. So when you're all said and done, you can pay like one hundred twenty dollars for everything. When you just buy the collection, or you just wait until they release this guy and spend like fifty, sixty bucks, and you got it all right. in one package. Right. That's definitely worth just getting the collection. And then you actually have the hard copy of it as well. So, you know, if something happens to your device, yep. you still have that. So, that's why I wish all the DLCs were always released in a collection. Uh, that would be great for a lot of the games. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the DLCs are pretty badass. And this one, I'm going to put it up there as pretty badass. That was pretty good that they... Because the story, I think... Probably took you and I, what, 10, 12 hours to get through? It was a decent story to play through. Yeah. And then you have Aftermath, which I think that was a two to three hour story. It wasn't terribly long, but it basically, like, if you play the original game and you're thinking, like, okay, that's how the story ends. It's like, not quite. Play Aftermath. Right. It changes the whole thing. Just a 
Total 180. It does. Like, what? And then you have the choice of either being the good guy or the bad guy. So we went back. We beat us the good guy. <laughs> then we went back, played it again. Not the whole aftermath, but we were able to go back to the fight. Choose. This is between Shang Tsung and Liu Kang. Right. So this time we chose Shang Tsung to win. And then we got that ending, too. So we got to see both endings. Right. And that was good to see, because now we could be like, all right. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I'm like, you got to see both. And like, then through the towers, you can actually see other alternate endings as well. Yeah, every character then has their own ending, so... Right. With the story as its own thing, then each tower has... Now you have that option of choosing that character to get all the way to the end. Mortal Kombat. You're right? Right. It's awesome. they, Mortal Kombat Mondays, when they came out, when the game was released, they called it Mortal Kombat Monday. Like the ads on TV, the kids are in the street, they're like, Mortal Kombat! <laughs> and then everybody's just like running in the streets, and everybody's like, yeah... Yeah, it's always been a great game for me. It's always just been, well, what do you want to do? Yeah, let's play some Mortal Kombat. It's Not only did it spawn um, two movies, it did spawn a short-lived TV series, but it had like a trading card game, comic book series. Um, man. They did try to, um, I don't know if you ever played for the PlayStation or 64, they came out with like, Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub Zero is their version of like an RPG. Hmm. It's uh, it was a game that you wish that was awesome, but in reality, it kind of was like, it it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like okay, so you're running around, and then you know when you fight people, you fight them like Mortal Kombat style, but then you have right. potions to heal, you have stuff to give you power ups, and boss fights are just like. Mortal Kombat, but you had levels where you had to jump from here to here. You can slide under, like, open up, move traps, but there's a certain level where it's just like, you had to go from one windmill to the next, and if you missed it, you died. And it was just like a pain in the ass just to... So it was like an old, like, a Battletoads slash Ninja Turtles no, it was, um, scenario? Or? It was a third person, like, um, it was side-scrolling, but it was 3D... And yeah, you basically were just going hmm. through the levels, and then when you fight a person, it's like, your health bar, his health bar, you... Like, especially, like, the pawns, like, two, three hits, they're down. Sure. You move along, and they're like, oh, there's a potion, you go down here. Oh, I'll pull this key, this door opens up, you quickly slide under before it hits you in the trap. I mean, we can try one time, and I can show you how crappy it is, but... Sure. Um, one thing that was cool about the PlayStation version compared to the 64 is the PlayStation had full motion video. They actually had real life movies playing it so they had a guy playing Sub-Zero a guy playing Quan Chi and they acted it out so you got to see the cutscenes were actually movies right and then you go to 64 it's just picture and text it's like <laughs> fucking 64 <laughs> at the time oh uh, but it's very exponential as far as from console to console they built upon it they've got a great franchise going on uh, I think they've done a wonderful job so far especially a legacy uh, game this long you think by now people have been like bored of it but it's like how do we they're not necessarily like reinventing the wheel but they're they're going back to the drawing board right they go they've they figure how can we make it fresh how can we make it new but how can we make it that our fans aren't getting burned out with the same material it's right. just like it's a fighting game okay but how do we make the funny game engaging how do we get people who like the game to continue buy it, but how do we get new people to get involved? And that's when they start bringing in new characters all the time. New characters, yeah. More emphasis probably on story, character development. I think people want that. People want the opportunity to build a character or fight online or do all these alternate challenges like the Crypt. We have to spend just hours going through opening chests, going through challenges to... It's like a puzzle. Yeah, to build your character, unlock stuff. I mean, there's probably so much unlockables in this game. You, And then the AI battles are actually fun because you're like okay you right. sit there for like two three hours just picking the AIs and it's it's like it's gambling it's like okay I'm gonna win or lose and it's just like dude 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 right you know you yeah. get money you get your coins that you can use in the crypt you get hearts that you can use in the crypt so even if you lose you still walk away at something yeah I definitely love just going through the crypt and just trying to figure out some of the puzzles you know, just to do something different. It's like a totally different game. Mm -hmm. So between that and the towers and the AI battles, as well as fighting all your friends or whatever, like, 
let alone the storyline. It's a bunch of different games basically in one. Yeah. So I feel like they're doing a good job of trying to mix it up, keep it interesting for you. It's like a different flavor depending on what you're looking for. So Yeah. Well, that's why you and I kind of probably gone back and picked up some of the older ones. It's like, well, now I'm just curious how the other games were in the past to see, like, where did it change? Where was it like, okay, now they're kind of faltering, falling off the beaten path. Sure. And then they kind of, you know, brought it back. Took some time off, figured out what they wanted to do, and kind of rebooted it and built it from there. Oh, yeah. And so, but no, I definitely say Mortal Kombat 11, it's actually a lot of fun. And you play this one, play the Aftermath. Definitely get it with the Aftermath. Yeah. Because you get all the stuff. You get the combat packs. You get the ex expansion on the story. Right. All the fighters. And then when if you really want to, then you can go back and kind of play 10. And then maybe make your way back to 9. And then if you're a collector like us, you just kind of start finding them and picking them up just to see how it was. Then you can see the storyline and how it actually right. progressed into what it is today. Exactly. So they're still playing off of some of the original stories. Yep. And they've progressed all that all the way through. I mean... Now some of the original characters actually have kids. Mm -hmm. Their kids are now in today's right. uh, Mortal Kombat. So it's like, okay, you're, they're creating generations now of characters. And they're continuing the storyline. Like, eventually, are we going to have grandparents? Is there going to be, like, a Grandpa Scorpion? Like, <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, is um, you're in the crypt. Not to give too much spoilers out, but you're in the crypt... You're on Shanksen's Island. You actually go to the point where the original Mortal Kombat, one of the levels was with the original statues. You got Goro and you got Ray. You know, all of them right. are right there. So it's kind of like a little Easter egg of, you know, like like you said, full circle is where it goes. So, right. highly recommend if you're not a fan, you're kind of on the edge, try 11. Get the Aftermath. Get the whole collection like this guy right here. Ultimates. You get everything in it and everything. And then from here, just... Start collecting. I mean, I am looking forward to see what the when they announce Mortal Kombat 12, what they're gonna do. But yeah, I think uh, it's kind of nice to be back to something I enjoyed back when I was growing up. To now as an adult, right? Get to excite. And now with the new movie coming out, that's gonna be pretty sick to see. Oh too. yeah, that's coming out here pretty quick. Yeah, in about a month. Sweet. I'm excited. All right. Well, final verdict. What'd you think of the beer? You finished it. It was good. All right, well, I, I got to finish mine. So, until next time, people, Skull. Skull. What do you think? Did you give her a... Uh, I'd give her like a seven. I like it. I would... I will get it again. Yeah. All right. Well, I would not. definitely... Yeah, I'd say a seven is right. Just as the percentage of alcohol, seven percent.